Heat mapping tools became popular among marketers and designers because they offer an easy way to visualize complex behavioral data. However, with the ease of use comes the danger that the insights they provide are misleading. In this tutorial, we will explain how to avoid such risk by using segmentation and trimming to control which behaviors are displayed on a heat map. Before we get into the details on how to do that, let's take a look at this heat map and try to interpret it. It shows you where visitors clicked on a page. I'm sure you've seen pages like this before on many e-commerce websites. It allows visitors to either sign in or proceed to a registration form. There were, as you would expect, lots of clicks on Sign In Now and Create Account buttons. Both buttons get a similar share of clicks, which indicate that the business retains existing customers, but also acquires new ones. There were also some clicks on Forgot the Password link. It would be better if everybody remembered their passwords, but obviously that's not possible. Therefore, the clicks only confirm that the link is in fact needed. The lack of clicks on the navigation or any other elements indicates that people only did what they were supposed to do on that page. They signed in or registered. Such interpretation, compelling as it is, could be very wrong. What if users put wrong passwords when they tried to sign in? They would have to correct the password and click the Sign In Now button again. What if they do this a couple of times? All those clicks would add up and make a huge hotspot over the button. Same with the hotspot over the Forgot the Password link. On this page, the link doesn't even work. If visitors clicked it multiple times in frustration, we would get another hotspot. What could those visitors have done next if the link didn't work? Probably some of them would have clicked the Create Account button. So maybe there were fewer new customers than we first thought, and in reality, existing customers who couldn't sign in decided to register. That wouldn't be bad, after all, they would remain customers. But does the click on the Create Account button mean that visitors registered? What if they went to the registration form, entered their email, and got an error that the email is already registered? It's so easy to get fooled by a heat map, but that doesn't mean that heat maps are useless. You just need to use them wisely. The most important thing is to always generate separate heat maps for visits in which users failed and succeeded to complete a particular process or part of it. In this case, we would need to see heat maps for segments of visits with and without the account HTML page to which users are taken upon successful login or registration. You can add a new segment by clicking the plus icon. To find visits to the desired page, you need to use either the section or URL meta events as a filter. Once you choose the M data point type, the section event will be automatically selected. Sections are by default based on the part of the page address after the domain name. But unlike URLs, they include hash value and exclude search parameters. I will choose the account HTML section from the value field and click the apply button. Now we need to create the second segment of visits without the account HTML section. I'll duplicate the segment with the account HTML section by clicking the last icon on its branch. I will leave the event as is and just change the rule to without to exclude visits to the specified section. Now we have two mutually exclusive segments and we need to generate heat maps for each of them. Let's start with the successful visits. I will select the segment and then click the Heat Maps tab. I will set the minimum screen width to 1024 pixels to exclude data from devices with smaller screens, for which there is a different layout. This website doesn't have a responsive design, but if your site does, then you will likely need to set the maximum screen width as well to get accurate heat maps. Since I need a heat map just for one page, I will specify its name here. Otherwise, I will get a heat map for all of the pages visited by users in my segment. I will discuss the other options later. Let's see the heat maps first. There are three types of heat maps in Use It Better. The Click heat map shows you where the people clicked. The Moves heat map is based on mouse pointer or finger position. 
The exposure heat map shows how long each part of a page was visible in visitors' browsers. To see the click heat map, I need to select the desired page, in this case, the account login page, and hit the clicks button. It will take me to the website with the heat map overlay. We'll review this heat map later. First, let's repeat these steps to generate a heat map for the segment of visits in which users failed to log in or register. We will then compare the two heat maps. I'll select the other segment. Choose Heat Maps tab. Set the minimum screen width. Set the section. And load the heat map. Okay, now we have two click heat maps to compare. On the left, there are clicks of visitors who successfully reached the account HTML page. On the right, clicks of visitors who failed to do that. The heat map of visitors who failed shows that the visitors failed to reach the account HTML page regardless whether they tried to sign in or register. But can you see what's wrong with the heat map on the left? None of the visitors who reached the account HTML page used the sign-in form as there were no clicks over the form. Now let's try to get more insights from the heat map of users who failed to sign in or register. I would like to see what they did before and after they clicked the Sign In Now button. To do that, I need to first find out what event is tracked when a user submits the login form. I will open the website in the preview mode and navigate to the account login page. In the console log, I can see all the events that happened so far. Form submissions usually produce two events, a click and an action. I will filter the log to show these two types of events only. Now let's submit the form. As you can see, both mentioned events appeared. I will use the action event, which would also be tracked if a user would hit enter on a keyboard instead of clicking the button. I need to copy the action event to the clipboard and go back to the panel. To get a heat map based on behaviors that happened before a user submitted the login form, I need to paste the copied event from the clipboard into the closing event field. Note that the segment of visits in which users fail to register is still selected. Let's load the data and view the click heat map. As expected, the users only clicked on the login form fields before they submitted the form, and that's okay. Let's get another heat map, this time based on the behaviors that happened after users submitted the login form. I will use the same action event, but this time as the opening event. I will also clear the section field to get heat map data for any page visited after the form submission action. Since this heat map shows only clicks after the first attempt to submit the form, we can tell that some users corrected the password field and resubmitted the form. Some of them decided to register a new account. Since we generated the heat map for all the sections, we can now follow the user's footsteps and see what they were doing on other pages. You can use the same approach to analyze other areas of your website using heat maps. For example, to find out what people were doing before they added a product to the basket and after, or to compare behaviors of visitors who added a product to the basket and didn't do that. That's it.